Hey guys, just a couple of days ago I had a question from one of the guys on here and he had a problem with a unit. He, he just couldn't get the pressures right, couldn't get the temperatures right. So I asked him a bunch of questions and what I figured is that it was the valves on the compressor. The compressor valves were going bad. Now first I'm going to talk about how to check those but first let's talk about the actual compressor itself. We know that we have well, we have different body styles of compressors. We have the open, hermetic, and semi-hermetic compressors. We have different types of compressors. What I mean is there are different ways that the compressors do the compression action. But this, this uh, has to do with the reciprocating compressor. Now, when you say reciprocating, what does that mean? That means that the piston or something is moving back and forth because to reciprocate, it means to go back and forth. Typically, we have pistons inside of the reciprocating compressors. The piston is going to sit inside of a cylinder like this. You have the cylinder inside. That's where the actual piston is going to be. It's going to be like this and it's going to be hooked up to the crankshaft. The crankshaft is going to come down and it's, or the, the uh, connecting rod is going to come down like this and it's going to hook up to the crankshaft. Now, what happens here is as the piston starts to go down, the piston right here will go down. This cavity will fill with, with refrigerant. So now we fill this up with refrigerant. When the piston comes up, it's going to pump it out. Basically, what we have is going to be this. We're going to have your discharge valves right here, and you're going to have your suction valves right here. Refrigerant is going to be coming in here, and it's going to go right in through here, right into the cylinder right here. As it goes in here, this gets filled, when the piston comes up, this valve, the discharge valve, or in other words, the high pressure side, is going to open up. As it opens up, it allows it to go out onto the high pressure side. Now, regardless of what type of refrigerant you have, this is basically how it's going to work out. As the piston comes down, fills up. When the piston comes up, it pushes it out. Now, one of the things that happens is that if, let's say it's R22. Here, R22 in an air conditioning system, we're going to want about 68 PSIG. Why 68? Because that works out to approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we need. The high side, it could vary depending on the outside air temperature. That pressure could be anywhere between, let's say, 220 to 260 PSIG. That depends on the outside air temperature. So let's get back to the compressor. As the piston comes down, the discharge valve is going to close. It's going to be closed. This suction valve is going to open up, allowing it to fill in. Once it fills up, the pressure comes up. As the pressure comes up, the suction valve is going to close. Once it closes and the pressure in here gets above this pressure, the high side pressure, this valve is going to open up. Once it opens, it allows the pressure to go on out into the system. So now, <clears throat> once this reaches top dead center up here on top, then it's going to come back down. Once it comes back down, once it comes down, then it's going to fill up and then it's going to push it back out. Comes down, fills up, comes up, pushes it out. Now it's going to be doing this, depends on the compressor, depends on the manufacturer, anywhere between 1700 RPM to 3400 RPM. Now, the, this is how typically the manufacturers will do it. If we have, let's say, a VFD on it, variable frequency drive unit, this can vary by a lot. And we're not going to get into all of that, but this piston is moving up and down, as you can tell, very, very fast. So the refrigerant coming in and the refrigerant going out is going to be very, very fast. So one of the questions that I asked, that I asked was, does the compressor have a suction valve? 
does it have a discharge valve on the inlet of the compressor? Meaning that it has a valve here and it's going to have a valve right there. I needed to know that because if we're going to check the compressor, we need to know if it has those valves. Why? Well, because we're going to close this off. We're going to close this suction valve off. Never ever close the discharge unless you have turned power off. Why? Well, because if you have this closed and the compressor comes on by mistake, this is a, what they call a positive displacement compressor. This pressure will go up so high that the internal, internal pressure relief valve on that compressor will blow. That's going to open up. Yes, they do reseat. They do reseat once the pressure drops, but we don't want to do that because it's a scary situation. I've had it happen and it's a scary noise. Let's get back to this. So now, if these valves are leaking, what's going to happen is, just like any valve, when any valve leaks, what happens? The pressure goes always from high to low. So now this pressure is going to drop. This pressure is going to go up. So now my suction pressure will go up, discharge pressure will go down. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. We want to make sure that we keep that suction pressure down low where it needs to be so that we can keep the 40 degree evaporator. This needs to be up high so that now we can condense it when we need to. So we don't want this suction pressure to go up and we don't want the discharge pressure to drop. These valves, when they leak, that's what happens. So to test it, what we would do is we'll close this off. Once we close this off, what's going to happen is going to pump the compressor down. Now, on this, what happens here is we actually have the compressor like this. So now, we're going to be pumping the refrigerant that's in the crankcase of the compressor out of here. We're going to be pumping it and into here and then out. No new refrigerants coming in because this is closed. So what happens is if we have oil down here on the bottom, we're going to boil this refrigerant out of there. That refrigerant is going to come out, turn into a vapor, and we're going to pump it out. This pressure right here, we want this to drop down to zero PSIG. Zero. We want this to be all the way down so that we know we've pumped all of the refrigerant that's mixed in with the oil out of there. Now, once we've done that, let me review this. We're going to close off this valve. Go and push the contactor in. You push that contactor in, it's going to run, it's going to run the compressor, draw all of the refrigerant out of here, and pump it out. We want that pressure to get down to zero PSIG. Once it gets down to zero, you let go of the contactor, you're not pushing it in anymore. What happens is sometimes this pressure will go up a little bit. It'll come up and then you push it again. It'll drop down to zero and you let it go. Once that happens, then you're going to boil the rest of the refrigerant out. Now you may have to do this two or three times so that you can get everything out of there and you're going to see that it's going to stay at zero. Now that's a good thing. That's exactly what we want. But what happens sometimes is that when we close this valve, push the contactor in, and what happens is this pressure will not go down to, to zero. This pressure might only drop down to, let's say, 5 or let's say 20 PSIG. And that, of course, is a bad thing. We don't want that. That tells me that the valves are bad. These valves are bad. So now, if we push the contactor in, and it drops down to zero, and, and it does not stay at zero, it comes back up. You push it in again, comes back, that comes down, you let it go, comes back up. You push it in again, it comes down, you let it go, and it comes back up. And it keeps doing that. That tells me that these valves are leaking also. So now, what are you going to do? Well, there are a couple of things. Like I said, we have different types of compressors. We have the open, the hermetic, and the semi-hermetic compressor. Now, if you have a hermetic compressor, there's not much you can do except replace the compressor. 
if you have an open or a semi-hermetic compressor, then you're going to have this piece right here, which is called a valve plate assembly. A valve plate assembly. The valve plate assembly holds the valves in place, so we can actually pump the system down, recover the refrigerant that's in the system, close off the discharge valve right here, and we can replace the valve plate assembly. So again, we can isolate the compressor, recover the refrigerant that's in the compressor only, take the valve plate assembly out, put a new valve plate assembly in, pull a vacuum down to 500 microns in the compressor, open up your discharge, open up your suction, and you're set to go. So replacing the valve plate assembly on and open or a semi-hermetic compressor can be done. It should not take more than a few hours to do and it's a lot easier and better than replacing the entire compressor. If you have a hermetic compressor, you will not be able to do any of that work, but you will still be able to check to see if the valves are good or bad if you have a valve at the inlet of the compressor. Remember, the important thing to remember is that if this, these valves are leaking, this pressure, the suction pressure is gonna be higher. If the suction pressure is higher, our evaporator temperature is gonna be high, which means that now it's not going to maintain the evaporator at 40 degrees. Now we're gonna have a problem. Our evaporator temperature is high, air coming out of the vents is gonna to be too high, and we're not gonna cool the room or the building down like we're supposed to. Now I have replaced valve plate assemblies on seven and a half ton compressors, 50 ton compressors, 200 ton compressors. So this can easily be done. Keep that in mind. Also, let's, let's say that we have what they call a split system. And inside the split system, we're gonna have the refrigerant coming in here like this. It's gonna go to my compressor. And here's where the piston is right here. Inside here, we're gonna have my discharge valve and we're gonna have my suction valve right here. So now as refrigerant comes in, the piston compresses it, it's gonna go out. It's gonna go where? It's gonna go over to the condenser. To the condenser. Now, if it goes over to the condenser and then out the liquid line, right here, you're gonna have a service valve and you're gonna have another service valve right there. So what you can do is you can close off the suction service valve right here and then pump it down until you see the gauges go to zero. Now this will create a problem because the gauge manifold set is gonna be hooked up on this side. It's gonna be hooked up on this side of the valve. So you're gonna to have to see if you can somehow make a connection so you can hook up a gauge right there. So you can see if it drops down to zero. Close this off, push the contactor in until the pressure on this side gets to zero. You let it go. Remember, there's gonna be oil here. If there's oil, you're gonna to have to boil that out of there and you do that by pushing the contactor in a couple of times. So if it's at, let's say, 100 pounds of pressure, drops down to 20, you push it in again, or you let it go, it's 100, it's 100 PSIG, you push the contactor in, drops down to zero. You let it go, comes up to 20. You push it in again, drops down to zero, comes back up to three or five pounds of pressure. Then you push it in again, drops down to zero, and it stays at zero. That's a good thing. You can do that by closing this. That tells you that the valves are bad. If the pressure on this side keeps coming up and it keeps coming up and then down, up and down. When you, every time you push the contactor in, the valves are bad. If you push it in and it does not drop down to zero, the valves are bad. You replace the compressor. So that is how you check the valves on the compressor. Now, I did a video, and make sure you check this out, where I talk about how these valves work, the service valves.
it is important that you understand which side you're taking the pressure reading because if you're taking it on the wrong side, you're not gonna get the right readings and you're not gonna do this right and you might even ruin the compressor if your compressor's right, if your compressor's good. So make sure that you look for that video. I know I posted it a while ago. So look at that video where I explain how these valves work, where the connections are. Now, I hope this helped. My name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions or questions, please let me know and I'll see what I can do about getting the video online. Thank you.